name. And we're gonna be seeing an Urshifu mirror match, but it's a little bit different as Torn is opting for what I would consider an old reliable for him. Loves that Zoroark GX. I believe said it's his favorite card. Chinchino having that make do ability. It's trade, lets you discard a card from your hand, draw two cards. Not surprised that Tord gravitate towards his ability, especially in combination with such a powerful VMAX like Urshifu. And uh, on Mike's side, as we saw earlier, playing that Jirachi staple, so utilizing Stellar Wish as the main draw. This is going to be a good match. We're going to get into this right now for you all. I'm excited for this chip. Let's go ahead and get down to the match between both of these players. It's going to be an exciting one. These are two of the same decks, but at the same time, right, they play slightly different engines. Tord is playing this Chinchino line, while Mike is playing what we've seen the most of here with these uh, Urshifu lists, right? This uh, sort of, how do you describe it, right? This just standard version. It plays Jirachi, it plays Scoop Up Nets. Looking over at Tord's list, this is a very, very interesting list. Plays no copies of Research. Plays Bird Keeper, and uh, looks like a 3-3 Minchino and Shinchino line. Yeah, definitely really relying on that, uh, you know, make do ability reminiscent of his favorite card of all time. Like mm -hmm. you said, that Zoark GX that was so good with that trade ability won him at least two of his international championships. I can't That's quite pretty, remember what he good. played at the third yeah. one, but it, it, he's definitely someone who has really enjoyed this, you know, same type of strategy of being able to discard cards to draw more, and it's benefited him well in the past. So no surprise to see him utilizing the Chinchino here in the Rapid Strike list. And it's definitely interesting. There are four players in this tournament playing Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. We've got Mike Fouché, Tord Reklev, Mitch Nucky, and Azul Garcia Griego. You know, four extremely good players playing in this event. And Mike, uh, Mitch, and Azul all opted for this Jirachi build, but Tord kind of strayed away from that, went with this Chinchino route, and we'll have to see how it pays off for him. How does this mirror match break down? Is Tord going to be able to, you know, come out on top with the Chinchinos, or is Mike's Jirachi list going to be more consistent and more reliable? So looking at this mirror, there's two things to look at right away. Number one, is each player playing Mew? And the answer to this is yes, both players are playing Mew. The, the mirror match gets way out of hand if players are not respecting the mirror match, right? And Mew is a crucial card, as we have seen time and time again, lots of players respect it. Number two, what is the energy counts? Are there damage modifiers? And when I look at Mike's list, he's playing Martial Arts Dojo. And while Tord usually wants to get behind Mike, can maybe sit in the backseat, force Tord to take some knockouts, and then Playing Martial Arts Dojo will help both players, but the one thing to note is Tord is only playing two basic fighting energy. So he's going to be utilizing the Martial Arts Dojo a lot less than Mike is, as Mike is playing five basic fighting. As we look over at Mike's hand, oh my, this is, this is not what you want to see. Dedenne is your only real option to draw cards, but if you play Dedenne, you're losing two out of your three VMAX Pokemon. Your main attacker in this deck, I, I don't even know if you have the ability to play Dedenne down this turn, but it looks like Mike is going to go ahead and do it. What a painful discard here, getting rid of so many key cards. At least finding some better stuff here, though, off of that Dedenne. It looks like on the other side of things here, has Quick Ball, so we'll be able to thin out some more cards from the deck has another Urshifu V as well, so can play that down, right? We'll only be able to utilize one VMAX in this matchup. So I think just deciding what to quick ball for could also play down this Crobat and Dark Asset for a few cards. So I think that's the big thought process here for Mike is what do I want to do? He's eyeing up that Mew, obviously a very important card in the matchup. That other Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX is in the deck, so that is important as well to note. Speaking of Crobat, though, I don't see it there. Crobat is in hand. Oh, Crobat got it in the hand. hand. Okay, yeah. here we go. He's got it in the hand. Also has access to research, so has the ability to draw lots of cards. Yeah. I think he's eyeing up the Zigzagoon to maybe... I'm not sure. I'm not sure where this math comes in. I think it comes in when it comes on to taking the uh, the math onto the Urshifu Max, right? Because you're dealing 150 twice, so you can either boost that damage with Martial Arts Dojo, we see both of them in the deck, or with Zigzagoon and Scoop Up Nets. And since there is a net in Mike's hand and he's already gotten rid of one... I think this makes sense, right? Grabbing the Zigzagoon, you could deal 20 damage to that Urshifu VMAX, and I think just considering, right, you could also grab Jirachi, but we are going to see the Zigzagoon get grabbed, and it's going to go ahead and most likely deal damage to that Urshifu V. I think that makes sense. So uh, I think actually eyeing up, so deciding what to do, but is going to go ahead and place that one damage counter. Headbutt Tantrum, such a cool ability from Zigzagoon, especially in combination with these scoop-up nets. 
And I think just considering, yeah, it's going to go ahead and put the 20 damage there. And it looks like we are going to see a Crobat. Dark Asset, drawing through five cards, finds a good couple of cards there. Has Super access solid. to the Fighting Energy, has the Switch, Research Marnie. Now Mike is opening up the doors for himself, right? Is now giving himself a whole lot of options to work with. Yeah, definitely. And is going to go ahead and play this Marnie here as well. You're not really disrupting toward that much. You're actually potentially helping him out here where he only had three cards in hand, so you're letting him get plus mm -hmm. one card. And this is a huge draw as well for Mike, is able to find that Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX in hand. So that'll be huge for the next turn. You do only have one copy of it left, so you needed to try to draw into it at some point. So definitely solid to see. Uh, interestingly enough, Zigzagoon, normally we see these Fighting-type Pokemon have Fighting Weakness, so you would have thought maybe we could see a Zigzagoon ping there, so that way you can get a strafe KO, but it does not quite work out in this instance, as Galarian Zigzagoon is actually weak to grass. Yeah, that new change with the Sword and Shield era. Moving around the weakness, right? Yeah. Just to resistance. There's a lot of cool, interesting stuff happening there, and it looks like we are going to see another Urshifu get played down, so it is going to open up the possibility to for Tord a little bit more. So we are going to also see the scoop up net. We'll throw that Zigzagoon back into the hand. Also going to heal the damage off of it as well. And a Marnie here. Mike had such a solid hand yeah. besides that Marnie. Maybe I would even say, if I'm being bold here, the perfect five cards in hand <laughs> had their VMAX, had the Energy Dojo. Incredible, just some of the cards here. So but if you're Tord, right, there is merit to taking a knockout on Zigzagoon. It's a very powerful card. It can come in very useful. But the thing that's scary is you know Mike is playing Martial Arts Dojo. And by activating it, Mike can just play very passively utilize that damage boost as much as possible, and then take prize cards when he feels in a comfortable spot to clean up the rest of Tor's Pokemon. Yeah, definitely. I think Tord probably doesn't want to take this knockout here. I mean, maybe if you get the VMAX in play and you can, you know, knock it out, plus get 120 damage onto either Dedenne or Crobat, you'd feel a little bit better about that. But we actually see an interesting tech card in Tord's list, super interesting with that Snorlax with the Gormandize ability. So we might just see him kind of go back into that and... Uh, go ahead and Gormandize for a turn, and actually, interestingly enough, discarding a Rapid Strike Energy to do it. So we'll just Gormandize for a couple of cards here. Losing the Energy Attachment, though, that could be a big deal. Yeah, you need to preserve those energies. We know Tord is actually playing a very interesting count for Capture Energy. So Urshifu can't use Gale Thrust for a colorless energy, but you can still use it in combination with that Rapid Strike Energy. So it looks like Tord playing Karate Belt of his own. We know Mike is playing Karate Belt. We now see Tord has got it as well. And Mike is going to start things off, but this is not really what you want to see here. I mean, you have Quick Ball, right? So you could grab something else like another Dedenne out of the deck. I think that's your only option, but the problem here is you're clogging your bench up to the point where you need to find your last scoop up net in deck to open a bench space up. If not, you'll be unable to get Mew down and play, and Tord just has free reign at that point to utilize that G-Max Rapid Flow to just continuously apply pressure and spread damage. And then when he feels content, he'll open that bench space back up for Mike. And then at that point, it just feels like too much pressure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and another thing to note here is Mike has put a third two prize fighting weak Pokemon in play. So honestly, for Tord, things could just be as simple as, you know, boss KO the Dedenne, boss KO the Crobat, and then, you know, try to close out the game from that point on, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Mike here is debating whether or not to put that martial arts dojo down. Usually with benefit, you have to be careful. Tord is such a skilled player. Any card that's given to him, he's going to maximize the use out of it to the best of his ability. I think Mike is a little bit nervous about playing that down. Doesn't know if that's going to hurt him in the long run, but a nice draw there. Finds that Rapid Strike Energy and the VMAX. We may be seeing a GMAX Rapid Flow this turn trip. We haven't seen much of it because of so many of these decks playing Mew, but we are going to see this here. Already Looks attached like, return, though, to this. Yeah, oh, yeah, already did attach this turn. Yeah, he did attach the six So at minimum, we are going to actually see this go ahead and go on the aggressive here. So Mike is going to utilize that Gale Thrust to take a knockout. It will activate the Karate Belt on Tord's side of the field. So this is where Tord can take advantage of Karate Belt, right, his revenge mechanic cards that are being played in this deck to the best of his ability. And, I mean, he already has one Chinchino set up on board, two Vs, so... Tord, while he's going down in prizes, it still feels like he is in a solid spot, especially looking over at how many Fighting Week support two-prize Pokemon Mike has in play. 
definitely. I mean, I think this is what you kind of have to do as Mike. You can't just, with two of your VMAXs already being discarded, you can't just sit back and try to wait for, like, a boss's orders onto a V and, you know, play around your opponent's karate belt. You know, I think sometimes people would want to have that tendency, try to play around the comeback mechanic as much as you can, but I think this is as good of a time as any. You're going to Marnie your opponent to just four cards. They've only gotten one of their Chinchinos in play, and towards deck, I mean, if we're being honest, is definitely a bit more inconsistent in the early game. If you haven't gotten a bunch of Chinchinos set up, it can be tough to find all of your pieces. Your deck isn't playing, you know, as high accounts of, you know, research and things like that like we would expect to see normally in these lists. So Tord could have a hard time finding the pieces to even find a response attack. Yeah, is still playing a lot of pivot outs, so is yeah. still playing stuff like the scoop up nets, three air balloon in this deck. I don't think I've seen a count of air balloon that high throughout this. And we're actually going to see him take a really interesting approach and not VMAX and utilize that 100 fist blows for 150 damage. And this is where Mike not playing down the fighting martial arts dojo would be very solid here, right? This Tord would have been hitting for a lot more damage if there was a fighting energy and Mike has got to make some decisions here. Has access to G-Max Rabbit Flow this turn. I don't think there's much else he can do. I mean, could go for a boss's orders, but it looks like we are just going to see the G-Max Rapid Flow. Going to knock out that Jinchino on the bench and apply some pressure to this active Urshifu. And uh, Mike is going to go down to four prizes here. Finds a great catcher, but Mike needs to really put them together after this turn. Definitely. And I mean, it's it's a tough spot for Mikey. I mean, I like the decision to go ahead and take out the Chinchino here, but your only Urshifu that you have left has taken 150 damage, and it's also got your Karate Belt. So the fact that you drew into the Karate Belt early is definitely hurting you a little bit here. It's definitely something I think in this specific matchup you would ideally have later on in the game. And as we see, Tord is going to be going ahead and putting back the Giratina here. This could be telling of a Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, and this could be the time that we see a G-Max Rapid Flow. Yeah, especially with that Karate Belt, yeah. we'll have to discard one less energy. That's why Karate Belt can be so powerful in this deck, and I think Tord realizes he is going to milk this prize disadvantage out as much as possible because... Just you can attach rapid strike energy after rapid strike energy and just string together G Max rapid flows. We'll see what the choice is here. If he does clear bench space up, there is the Mew in Mike's hand. So we'll see what two targets Tor goes down. He could go after the active and something like a Crobat on the bench. That way he could take a four prize turn on a Dedene and a Crobat utilizing G Max rapid flow to hit for weakness again on these fighting weak Pokemon. There's a lot of routes here, and Tord is a skilled player. So carefully thinking over what options there are when it comes to everything. And, uh, yeah, I mean, besides this, though, Mike's turn is not going to be very eventful, right? I mean, can go in and maybe strafe with the bench. We are actually going to see him target down that Galarian Zigzagoon and going to deal damage to the active. So Mike is going to be playing off the top deck a little bit here, though. Finds another switch, though. That's a nice grab. Will allow him to, if he chooses to, utilize G-Max Rapid Flow again. But that feels so scary, knowing that your only V-Max is going to go down. So much pressure applied to it as well. I mean, what else can you do here, though, is Mike? I think you just kind of have to hope to get lucky. You got to take this, you know, t use this big hit here and try to just put on the pressure, hope maybe Tord doesn't have another energy, a way to keep attacking. I mean, they can, Tord, of course, can just go ahead with the strafe, but that's not going to be doing quite enough. So Mike's just going to go ahead and opt for the strafe of his own and actually strafe into the Mew. Yeah, interesting choice. We know Mew is very powerful in this matchup. So, I mean, Mike is not working off much, right? So it's hard to really discredit any plays here from Mike because there's not really much right. Mike can do. He, yeah. He's in a position where it's it's bad to set anything up and it's it's bad to make any play necessarily, right? If you go ahead and swing with the VMAX, you do apply more pressure, but the problem is you lose your only VMAX in play. You want to utilize that at the best time possible. Maybe get in one more GMAX rapid flow after your opponent goes down to more prizes. It would have actually been interesting to see Mike promote something like the Dedene there. That way he could get the Karate Belt back in his favor and put together a Gale Thrust or something like a G-Max Rapid Flow. Mm -hmm. However, it just, even with that, right, I think the main thing to look at is Mike is down all of his VMAX at this point, right? Two discarded, the last one is in play, heavily damaged. There's 70, 60 HP, excuse me, remaining on that. As we're actually gonna see Capture Energy come down onto that bench Urshifu V. And this is, again, a such a cool card in this deck because most people would say, I'm going to play Fighting Energy and Rapid Strike Energy because I want to play the energy that would sit, uh, suit Gale Thrust. But in this case, 
is just going to go ahead and opt to play Capture Energy this list because it's more consistent. And interestingly enough, it's going to grab the Mewtwo onto the bench. I think we're going to be seeing a scoop up Net Ship to utilize that ability. There's no real other reason to play that Mewtwo down. Yeah, definitely a, uh, a cool play there from Tord. Capture Energy brings down the Mewtwo. Scoop Up Net picks it back up, and then we're going to just see the, the supporter prepped on top of the deck for the next turn. Obviously, this kind of looks like a, a rebuilding turn for Tord. You know, you're not. it's kind of hard to get a knockout on this Mew anyway. You, you don't really want to discard a Rapid Strike Energy to do it, especially because I believe this is the game he, yeah, he retreated an Energy off earlier on, so that makes things tough. So, And that's huge, actually. We're going to just see the Bird Keeper put on top and a Cheryl here. Here, fully healing this Rapid Strike Urshifu. Yeah, can even utilize Gale Thrust for 30 damage to pressure that Mew a little bit, as there is another switch. Boss's orders as well. You can't boss stall anything, because you know your opponent just put Bird Keeper on top of the deck. Right. And Mike is on top of that in a time crunch. I I don't think there's anything Mike can do. It feels like the walls are just slowly closing on him. Yeah, it's just going to go ahead and pass the turn over. If you're Tord, you could even just take the turn to Strafe and knock out this Mew, and then set up Math to win the game with G-Max Rapid Flow at that point, right? You're at four prizes left. You can take a knockout on this V-Max. It's heavily damaged. And we are going to see that Bird Keeper get played. It's going to go ahead and switch into that Urshifu on the bench. We'll still need to find an energy, though, because obviously Strafe attacks for a fighting energy, and colorless energy is what that capture energy provides. There's a Jirachi. So Tord also playing Jirachi in this list is playing a bunch of one-ofs. One of Jirachi, one of Mimikyu, one of Mewtwo. Tord is the uh, the secret king of deck building sometimes that puts together these these weird concoctions. I remember uh, his Zoroark Gardevoir deck that he created, right? That that very interesting build that played weird counts of cards. But at the end of the day, it works out. Sometimes it feels like Tord knows how to build these decks. He knows how to pilot the decks. Oh, and yeah. just put himself in a very solid spot wherever he is and whatever deck he's playing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that Zora Gardevoir deck worked out very nicely for him, won him an international championship, so you can't really ever fault any deck-building decision Tord makes, because it definitely feels like he's the best to do it. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, again, Mike, maybe time to just go back to the drawing board here. It looks like he's going to play it out a little bit, right? And when you're in this elimination bracket, it's always worth it. Just play your options out. This is loser's bracket as well. We're actually going to see a very interesting play. Boss's Orders is going to bring up this Urshifu, get rid of that special energy with the Garatina, allowing you to discard a special energy yeah. while you play it down from your hand. And it's also going to go ahead and switch into it here. It is fighting resistance, so it's a little bit bulkier, but not by much here. It will most likely still be knocked out by something like a uh, G-Max Rapid Flow here, and I think Tord is digging for that here. Knows that G-Max Rapid Flow will be the knockout, especially if he gets something like an escape rope, uh, but it looks like he actually is not opting to play any escape rope in this deck. Garatina resists fighting, so it will not be enough just with that, but it looks like is going to try to utilize something like that bench Urshifu to deal damage. So, again, Tord, in the driver's seat in this match, has tons of options to play with. And it looks like we're actually going to see the Rapid Strike Energy get attached. And there's there Lost. There it is. That will do it here. Huge G-Max Rapid Flow, able to pick up the KO on the Dene GX and the Rapid Strike Urshifu on Mike's bench toward dealing that spread damage, able to close the game out and takes a pretty strong win there in game number one. Mike had a really unfortunate start, had to discard the two VMAX, was definitely on the back foot kind of from the beginning. I think played really well, but just wasn't quite able to close it out with the hand he was dealt. We'll have to see if he can make adjustments and uh, see how the draws look for him in game number two. Yeah, the big thing there was draws. That was a rough day change off the start of the game. Had to get rid of so many crucial pieces, right? Had to get rid of the two VMAXs. Also, had to get rid of some switching outs and other things. But again, the big pieces there were the two VMAX. So, he's going to be back to the drawing board, right? He's got to put something together. But I think this matchup is definitely winnable if Mike can get rid of that view. We know Tord is not playing a way to recover it. So, these Chinchinos on the bench are easy targets for something like the G-Max Rapid Flow. It will also not only give Mike prizes, but shut down Tor's ability to draw through cards, his main draw engine in this deck. As he's only playing a few other draw supporters like Marnie and Bird Keeper. So let's see what adjustments these players make. This is going to be a big game too. Again, Mike cannot afford to lose this or he will be eliminated from the tournament toward one game away from trudging through the loser's bracket and advancing to the next round. So let's go ahead and get into this game between both of these players. It's going to be a good one. 
Excited to see how this one's going to play out. Of course, Mike needing to win both games here in order to move on. So already on the back foot against one of the best to ever play the game. Definitely, uh, you know, a tough situation. But Mike is a very seasoned player, has played against top-level players for years and years and years. So he's no stranger to this situation. Has an unfortunate starter there in the Dedenne GX, but does have the quick ball, has the energy. So we can definitely still see that attachment to a rapid striker. Shifu VMAX. Yeah, I don't think it's the end of the world here. You get what you want turn one. You have draw supporters to follow and up the following turn. So there's a bunch of options that this play can make. So we'll see exactly what happens when it comes to both of these players. Looks like opting to see what the discard will be here. I think just looking through a few options to see... Do I get rid of the scoop of net? Do I want to get rid of a supporter? And it looks like the scoop of net will be the option here for this player. And, uh... Yep, just doing a first deck search. Looks like the VMAXs are in deck, so we'll have access to those this game. Looks like one of those Vs are priced. Not the biggest deal, though. Still has a fair amount of them in there. And uh, besides that, just wants to also check how everything is. It looks like two Fighting Energy are in the prizes there. Definitely an important card. You need those energies to get off those attacks. You could utilize Martial Arts Dojo as well. Uh, but that could also be good for the late game, right, to draw those cards uh, in your hand when it comes down to it at the end. Definitely. So just taking time to check the prizes, definitely what you'll see all of these high-level players doing. And we do see the attachment. Going to hold off on attaching the Karate Belt, which is definitely smart. Not something that's active right now. You kind of just want to have it for later in the game, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it just get Marnied back into the deck on this coming turn. And uh, we'll have to see how Tord gets things going here. I think that uh, Snorlax is maybe the best starter since it feels like that's the time it's going to be most useful, right? Is in the early game. So if we can see Tord play the handout, get a couple of Minchinos in play, find a Rapid Strike Urshifu, get an energy onto it, we can see a big Gormandize to close out the turn. Yeah, Tord plays 20 Pokemon, so <laughs> a third of his deck is Pokemon. And hey, man, if, if you just got to get good at the game, just uh, start your best starter. That or Jirachi, I would say, probably the two best starters mm -hmm. in this deck. And uh, starts Snorlax in a pretty crucial game. He's got to feel good if you're toward to do that. His level ball is a great card in the deck to search out those Minchino and Chinchino lines. Looks like just taking the time toward, obviously, his very experience. Wants to take time to look through the deck, see what's prized. You are playing sort of a combo-based deck. You need time to set up. So mm -hmm. it's even more important that you see, do I have my Minchinos prized? Do I have them in deck? What do my boss counts look like? Do I have my, my cards I need, like my energies, my capture energies, a whole bunch of stuff like that. So it looks like we are actually going to see the card get grabbed off of that level ball. Minchino get Pokemon Communications back in the deck to grab that Urshifu, which makes me signal that there's an energy, and there it is. Capture energy will just probably most likely go ahead and grab <laughs> that Minchino. So a little funny. bit of a weird <laughs> order of operations. It's yeah. the same thing got done, essentially, right? Pokemon Communications in combination with uh, the level ball, but toward just is able to put together everything perfectly. Such a, I mean, it's it's a, just a weird play off the bat, right? Why would you level ball for a Pokemon and then be Comet back? But if that's what you need to do, right, to burn cards, he knows he can get what what's needed in hand. And uh, did yeah. exactly that, right? So a solid turn for Tord's going to end it off with a Gormandize as, uh, oh no, uh, this hand's not looking great for Mike. May have to get rid of one of his three fighting energy in deck to utilize Stellar Wish. And then from there is playing off Stellar Wish to keep himself in a solid position. Yeah, has the Pokemon communication in hand, so you can always put back this Jirachi GX, you know, bench the other Jirachi, and then go in with, like, a Crobat or Dedenne potentially here. So we've got some draw options, but once again, we're coming down to that situation that we kind of saw in Game 1. It didn't end up not mattering too much in Game 1 because Mike's draws weren't the best, but he is putting multiple Fighting Weak Pokemon in play, which can be very detrimental. And you see him again... Eyeing up the martial arts dojo is so hesitant to play that down because again, Tord would just run away with that at this point. Does not play yeah. any stadiums in the deck, and it's so scary to pretty much hand a kid a chocolate bar at this point, right? To pretty much let Tord go wild with his dreams and his yeah. plays, and uh, he's actually going to opt to hold it. So it's going to be one less card off that dark asset, going to fill the hand back up to six. But at the same time, it's it's not the end of the world. It's one less card. Does still matter, but does find the Marnie off of there. So will be able to see a fresh new five cards. Do not see oh. any switch. No VMAX here, which is very unfortunate. Would have liked to have probably just gone ahead and taken this quick prize, but I guess you still have an option to find it here if we see a Pokemon communication and uh, don't find it yet, but does still have the option to scoop up net and then switch in Stellar Wish once again. 
Yet it looks like going to opt to grab has a few options, right? Looks like eyeing up something like that scoop up net is considering just failing the Stellar Wish. So we're not going to see anything here. And we're actually going to see it looks like a switch into that Urshifu. But again, is it really worth it to burn a switch in this case? It looks like Mike feels that it is worth it to hit for 60 damage with the weakness and switch back into that Jirachi. Yeah, I mean, this makes it so that if the Snorlax goes to the bench, you can knock it out. It does have 130 HP, right? And, of course, GMAX Rapid Flow does not deal weakness to the bench, right? So it, it's something you can knock out later on. Uh, of course, Tord will probably want to get his Mew down at some point and also could, you know, scoop up net this out of play as well. So not necessarily the most relevant damage, but when you're looking at Mike's hand, he's most likely going to be playing Research anyway, so it could be worth it to just throw the damage down just in case. Yeah, and it looks like Tord has a few options. He's gonna actually start things off with a scoop up net. So that we'll go ahead and put the Snorlax back into the hand. And yeah, again, utilizing Pokemon communications with all these search options, scoop up nets is making the most out of this card for sure. Look into the deck, see what we could grab. Could grab something like that Chin Chino to draw some more cards. Also has the option to grab the Dene GX. There is one in that deck. There's a lot of options, so it really just depends on what Tord has in hand, and we'll see what he ends up going ahead and grabs. Yeah, plenty of options for sure. It is just going to be the Chinchino. Could even see Tord go a little slower here if he's able to, like, discard a fighting energy. You know, you can go with the energy assist. Not that that's, like, a great play, but it gives you the option to still play from behind, which is kind of what Tord's deck is built to do. You want to be able to utilize your karate belts. Uh, you know, even the Shero, which we see hitting the discard pile right now, can be a huge come-from-behind card as well, specifically in this matchup. But we will just see Tord go ahead and grab the Mew. Huge ability there with the bench barrier, and it is going to be a clean Dene change drawing six new cards. Yeah, utilizing the Dene to that fullest. It is the only support Pokemon, draw support rather, in Tord's deck. Does still play stuff like the Mew and is able to get that down as well. So this will be big in the Bird Keeper as well. We'll go ahead and throw that Urshifu VMAX in the active. It's going to draw Tord three more cards. We'll see what he ends up going for. Just needs to find something like a Rapid Strike Energy. And we could see a G Max Rapid Flow deal some solid damage to multiple Pokemon, could target down that Urshifu VMAX, could chase after the Jirachi, could also deal some damage to Crobat to set up for a four price turn. Mm -hmm. So the options are pretty much limitless for Tord as we will see make do. Go ahead and discard a Marnie. Gonna just get Tord two fresh new cards as, yeah, I think Tord honestly looking for either a Fighting Energy or a Rabbit Strike Energy at minimum. Otherwise, you're just gonna see this in the active, right? And then it pretty much gives Mike free reign to try to dig for the pieces necessary to get this knockout. Or rather, yeah. not knockout, but rather put apply pressure to it. Definitely, and that's what Mike really just needs to do. I mean, Mike is definitely happy to see that Shero hit the discard pile. Of course, Tord can reutilize it with the Mewtwo's Mind Report, but it limits the amount of times Tord can utilize it because, you know, you have to use one of the scoop up nets, which can be a valuable resource. And we're actually going to see Tord kind of taking a slower turn here, just going to capture energy, back down that Snorlax, come back into play one more time. And it's just going to be another Gormandize. And I think this is kind of just how Tord wants to play this deck, wants to be a little bit slower and, uh, you know, draw some cards, let his opponent take prizes so that he can utilize the come from behind cards. I'm just so baffled at this point, if I'm being honest. It's it's a deck that revolves around trade, make do, right? So to draw cards constantly, and you get these big hand sizes like you get with this deck, with Zoroark, where you have so many options to play, and Tord filled his hand up to like 10, 12 cards, and then found a way to, to bring it all the way down to like three yeah. cards in hand, and then fill it back up. That just shows the prowess of Tord as a player, as a competitor in this game. And it looks like considering playing the Switch could also Mario's this point, but I think just wants to utilize Strafe. I think both players are going to take their time building off the board. This is remin reminiscent of a lot of mirror matches. Just the one that comes to mind is something like the Gardevoir GX mirror match, where both players would take time to build up their board, and then eventually the first person to get something, like a Boss's Orders, Lysander, Guzma, whatever the, the gusting card was. That could be the way that this match needs to play out, especially as people are learning it more and more, especially as we're seeing it from these veteran players. So I think both players, yeah, are taking the back seat. Mike's hand's not looking too powerful, though. Does have a Pokemon Communications, can grab some more targets, still has another Dene in deck. So it's just going to come down to what route Mike wants to take and is obviously going to take his time and see. Has the ability to take a knockout on the Snorlax, could also go for something like a set up a G-Mash Rapid Flow for next turn. There is a new in play, so there are a lot of options here for Mike. 
Yeah, definitely. Could he see, also, you know, go get another Urshifu, get another energy on another Urshifu, could spread the damage out a little bit and just go for another strafe, which is kind of a slow play, but that actually might be what he's eyeing up. Uh, I mean, we saw kind of Tord play things slowly in game one, playing things slowly, very slowly in this game as well. So maybe Mike is kind of thinking the same thing here. Maybe I can play it a little slower, but Mike is going to go ahead and take this first prize, knocking out Snorlax, doing 150 times two thanks to Fighting Weakness. And now Tord here, sending up this Rapid Strike Urshifu. Already has the Air Balloon prepped, just needs to find the Fighting Energy, and we can see him start to use Gale Thrust and eventually G-Max Rapid Flow. Yeah, and this is the question, honestly, for Mike. Do you even V-Max this if this gets hit? I'm, I'm sure Tord has plenty of options in deck to look at. So this is going to come down to what Tord is able to find, how he's able to put things together. Interesting thing to note, Mike did find Quick Ball off of that, so we'll have a valid card for next turn to maybe dig through the deck a little bit more. It just feels like a repeat of game one, though, where his bench just feels so much more clogged than Tord. I mean, Tord only has one Chinchino out, but we could see a second one get built up, especially with this Pokemon communication. Snorlax put in its use, right? It got multiple Gormandizes, it, it drew cards, so I think Tord is honestly pretty happy to see that Gormandize get utilized so much, and uh, we will see the other Urshifu V get VMAxed, so two Urshifu VMAx staring down Mike's not so impressive board, if I'm being honest, but nevertheless, Mike's still not out of this, does have more energy on the board than Tord has for those fighting energy. Tord has not yet drawn into a fighting or a rapid strike energy, so it's just going to come down to Tord needs to apply pressure. If, if you give Mike free reign to even hit for 150 damage, it's still going to put in work. So this is going to be the big question. Can Tord find an energy this turn? I think if he's able to, we could even see something like a G-Max Rapid Flow set up math. We could see a Gale Thrust deal some solid damage. So that's the main thing, right? Can Tord find an energy this turn? Definitely. And we haven't seen him draw one yet. So, I mean, he could have a bunch prized. They could just be hiding at the bottom of the deck, potentially. We'll have to see uh, what he's working with there in the hands. Mm -hmm. Definitely going to go ahead and set up another Minchino here. Wants to get a couple of those guys in play, I would imagine. I'm surprised we've only seen one set up at this point so far, but really, you know, Wanted to make sure he could establish his two VMAXs, I think, first. And uh, so, yeah, we're actually just going to see a capture energy here. And Oh, don't tell me. Don't oh, tell me. Oh, we're seeing a tail whap. The tail whap. Oh, my goodness. 30 damage. Okay, so most people would say tail whap. Why? But it's actually relevant damage. It can come in useful later on with stuff like Zigzagoon. So that's why Tord is actually opting to play a split of the Minchinos, playing two copies of the 70 HP Minchino, and then one copy of the 60 HP Minchino, Tord would be the only one to think of a play. <laughs> you usually take a turn maybe to just hide behind it or, or capture energy, maybe the the, cinch, the Chinchino to hit for some more damage. Or Yeah, but Tord just making this play here. It's Shrafe will actually take the knockout, so that is the one downside to playing the 60 HP Chinchino, right? Or the Minchino, rather. You give yourself that option of being knocked out by a Shrafe. And uh, this just allows Mike to switch into a more fragile Pokemon that won't give up as many prizes, like Jirachi, that can also pivot out of the active. So Mike's got to be pretty happy about that, that there was no G-Max Rapid Flow. And I feel like Mike, that could have been the turn he needed, right, to get back in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And Mike has a potential setup here to just close the game out by ignoring both of these VMAX Pokemon from Tord. What he can do is go for the boss's orders, bring up that Mew, take the knockout on it, and then try to set up for a GMAX Rapid Flow, knocking out both the Dene GX and the Chinchino. Now, Tord could counteract this play by using a scoop up net to pick up the Chinchino, take that option out of play, which, I mean, if I'm being honest, that's 100% what I would expect to see Tord do if Mike did chase down the Mew, but it honestly might still just be. Mike's best option and now with this other Minchino coming into play that makes it even better of an option for Mike to be honest yeah but Tor did finally find an energy so we'll be yeah. able to fire off a G Max rapid flow I think this may target down both Jirachis actually wow a very smart play from Tor knows Mike has not been drawing well so this will eliminate both of the main search options out of Jirachi and, and now Mike kind of is back in that position where Really don't want to play down another support Pokemon, but there is the boss's orders. That is a big find here. Has the boss's orders. We also see Quick Ball in hand. Mike can find something like a Dene GX. At this point, your opponents have four prize cards. You already have two of those GXV Pokemon that are weak to dark, right? So I actually think I like this play here. We're going to go ahead and see the boss's orders bring up that Mew. Fighting Energy will get played down. I think we're going to see something like a 100 Furious Blows. Just take the knockout, and this just opens up a lot of plays here for Mike. 
You allow yeah, yourself to, yeah. It's just you just pretty much give yourself more outs. You don't need to DNA right now, right? You have one in deck. So Mike analyzing that Marty could set me back last turn. I want to maximize my draw here in the upcoming turns. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and Mike has set up the ability to win the game on the next turn. Great catcher or boss's orders onto Dene GX with a G Max Rapid Flow, knocking out both the active and then one of these benched Pokemon. Now, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I 100% expect to see Tord play two scoop up nets here, pick these Chinchinos up, take away that win condition completely. But if he doesn't find it, it's very realistic for Mike to fight back and make that happen. Yeah, and there's two sides to that as well, right? You take those threats on the board, but then. You're kind of a, a Zoroark deck without the Zoroark in that right. point. You're, you're, you're a deck without your draw engine. As we actually see Tord get rid of a fighting energy here, the card that he struggled so much to find, as he will go ahead and quick ball away that Karate Belt, could utilize it here. It looks like there are, if I'm not mistaken, two air balloons on both of these G-Max Pokemon. Yeah. So this is the problem here, right? So now you can't utilize something like that, but we actually see the Giratina is going to come in clutch here. If it does get played down, I'm sure it will. We'll just be one more piece Mike needs to find. Hasn't mm -hmm. played too many Rapid Strike energy, though, so still has plenty of options as we actually see the second make do. Go ahead and get rid of that Jirachi. Not needed anymore. I guess you could Stellar Wish with it, but it's not going to be the main cause, the main search in this case is towards Scatify Devil Scoop of Net. That seems like the only route of play as we do finally see that Garatina come down. Is going to go ahead and discard that Rapid Strike energy. And I, I have to wonder, now that's one more target you have to scoop up net now, right? So... We yeah, that's definitely Tord just going. not what yeah. Tord is going to be doing at this point, it feels like. I mean, Tord, uh, you know, could be just setting up for the Rapid Flow, you know, hit the, the Dedene on the bench and, you know, try to knock out the Crobat and the Dedene next turn, something like that, as we see Mike mousing over both of those fighting weak Pokemon. And we're actually going to see the reset stamp from Tord. Kind of interesting. Your opponent has not oh, done very much no. this game, uh, but going to go ahead and stamp away the four-card hand to a three-card one, and it is a really bad draw there from Mike. Oh my, Mike have nothing in hand. What's the top deck? It's Karate oh my Belt. Oh gosh. At least has the ability to utilize Gale Thrust this turn. So the, the thought process behind that is you pretty much make it easier for yourself to win as your opponent doesn't have the boss's orders and combination. I actually think it's correct to, oh, I'm not quite sure at this point. I think you have to VMAX the bench. And now this opens up the ability yeah. for Tor to win the game at the boss's orders. So we will see this get promoted, and Mike's got nothing he can do here. He does have the other VMAX, though, so boss's orders will still give the game, right? Can still bring up the Crobat, so let's see if Tord has it here. It's going to be on him. Five cards in hand. He's got two make-dos to make this possible. Oh, yeah. Do we see the boss's orders? That will be able to take a four-prize turn and knock out this Crobat. And then the Dene, we, we don't see it yet, so Tord's going to have to go ahead and make-do and try to find that boss's orders. One make-do is going to go ahead and get rid of that Urshifu V, so... Even then, though, Mike is playing off of another top deck at this point. Yeah. It, it just feels so weak. I mean, there are still lots of options, but again, Mike just feels the draws are on the back foot towards showing us the consistency of this Chinchino Rapid Strike variant that he's created. Insane that, uh, you know, off of this draw from the Marnie, Mike is just unable to really do much of anything at all. You really feel for him. It feels like both games in this set, just things have not gone according to plan. But Tord has definitely been able to capitalize on that. And we'll see if he's able to find the boss. Looks like it doesn't quite have it yet. So, uh, I mean, still in a solid spot. Like you said, Mike is still drawn off the top. As Tord, you definitely are totally aware in this position that your opponent just really doesn't have much. You know, you Marnie them, they played their hand down to one card and then just just attacked, did nothing else, right? They definitely would have played a quick ball or a research or something if they had it. So you know your opponent's in a tough spot. But there it is. There's the boss's orders. Yeah, there's the boss. It's going to bring up the Dene, but it actually won't be game. We, we've done it wrong. We've done the math wrong, Chip. We, uh, we made a mistake here. It's not going to be enough because that bench will be able to hang on with 30 HP remaining. But Tor will still be able to take a knockout with Gale Thrust. So... Not quite, so it was important that Ma uh, that Mike actually found double VMAX there, and it's going to be even harder for Mike, especially with that Mewtwo Mind Report throwing another boss's orders. Is on there top not 100 and... Oh, Tord has four prizes left. I was looking at Mike's prizes, I think, with the three prizes left. I think, I don't know, I still feel like take the option of taking out that uh, Urshifu on the bench doesn't seem too bad to me. Yeah, I think just going to go ahead and G-Max, Rapid Flow. It pretty much comes down to Mike's top deck here. If Mike can find the cards necessary, 
such as a Dedeme here to then utilize something like the switch in combination with a boss. This is going to be the turn that has to happen. So Mike is going to go ahead and promote this Urchifu. Knows if he doesn't top deck anything, the game is over. What's the top deck? It's a switch, but no, there's nothing else he can do. Mike has run out of options. His luck has come to an end. And just like that, Mike will be eliminated from the tournament here. Tord Reklev is going to take a 2-0 victory over Mike Fouché in this Urshifu viewer match. And Chinchino showing its prowess greater than Jirachi, apparently, as Tord is able to close that one out. Very unfortunate for Mike. I mean, I think Mike played pretty well. Definitely didn't have the draws go his way, but that's what it can come down to in these tournaments sometimes. Uh, you know, Mike played well, just things didn't quite go his way. Uh, but, you know, you got to definitely give full credit to Tord, played masterfully.